again. Um, uh, melted metal turned out to be Britannia quality silver. Okay. A curved blade. And then the old Roman coin covered in dirt. I think it was Garrow. Because he was following Blinkhorn and... Um, uh, what is it? Bentcliffe around. Um, and I think he had the coin in his evidence, or was no? That was in Bentcliffe's evidence. That was in the victim's uh, possessions. So he followed the research. So he removed his glasses, saw the knife flying through the air, a flash of gold, blah blah blah. There's like shining gold, which could be reflection, so it could have been the silver that we found was the knife, and somebody threw it into the uh, brazier to melt it down. So that's a popular theory right now. He'd been rather secretive. Saw him leave. When he returned, it was very late. Showed me some wet coins, Roman coins. He started to laugh. So this was just a few days ago. He found Roman coins and showed them to Gara. So where are the rest of them? Uh, oh, the map of London. Now we have two maps. We must combine them properly. Right, yeah, this was part of um, Bentcliffe's possessions as well, was a map of a potential dig site. Um, what have we got here? Kind of a weird dog leg in the road. Oh, it's... oh god. Oh, it could be anywhere. Okay. Well, that looks like a river running through it. Aha! Oh, here we go. Watson, pack your bag. We are visiting a location in St. Albans marked on Sir Rodney's map. So we need to search the excavation site. Site is closed till further notice. Archaeological field. This forbidden. archaeological site has been abandoned. Why did Bentcliffe come here? Yeah. What should we do next, Holmes? Well, next we bust the fence down. We ram it with our horse. Oh, we can open the gate. That works too. I'm good with that. So who's this guy? Domum Hadriano. So what was with the blood? You had a phone call. It's very watery blood. There was water in the blood. And that could be because it's, um, where is it? Steam moisture. Uh, the water is present because of the humid atmosphere in the steam. We scraped the blood off of, like, the tiled surfaces as well, and the room had cooled. The steam had probably condensed, and water mixed in with the blood. Or, there's something else going on. I'm going with something else for now, because that's, that's an explanation we have, and the other one is one we don't have. What have we got here? Some metal cubes and a document. A knife used by Mithras for the Toroctony. Is that right? Toroctony. Yep. The sacrifice of a bull is originally curved a sacrificial blade of Persian origin. 
That curve can be f uh, from 5 to 15 degrees. The name is derived from the Persian uh, Shamashir, which means sword. Uh, the radically curved sword uh, family includes uh, Shamshir, Scimitar, Talwar, uh, Kilij, uh, Pulwar, and uh, the Mongol Sabre. Hmm. A myth of the golden knife. Golden knife? Okay. So that's what Garrow thought the blade was shining gold, right? Um, is the key to some of the Mithratic mysteries... Uh, that some describe as the equivalent to the Holy Grail. The Golden Knife carries a curse that will spill the blood of the unworthy who dare touch it. Okay, let's reread this. So, the Bentcliffe mummy that was found had an enucleated eye, so stabbed in the eye, posed in an unusual position as if reaching out for something or someone, buried upright. Bentcliffe was found with his arm dangling out like you know he was leaning up against one of the seats but his arm was propped on the edge of the seat as if he was reaching for something kind of really want to touch that knife now mm -hmm. just to test it but don't you tell me what to do i'll touch anything i want well within reason <clears throat> so it's called the desperate mummy uh, peculiar characteristics nearby could be read in latin by the eye he was punished for he saw he was not worthy and is believed to be a roman rather than, than an egyptian as symbols in the tomb were common with mithratic mysteries okay the myth of the golden knife is a key to the mithratic mysteries that some describe as equivalent to the holy grail carries a curse that will spill the blood of the unworthy who dare touch it. There's some very similar wording here, so either the curse of the mummy is real, or the, or the curse of the knife, rather, is real, or somebody posed it that way. Saying shit like that is how you get a restraining order. <laughs> this is true, that's why I said, within reason. So we have some weird-ass cubes. Look at this, we've got some ancient Lego here. Perform an analysis. Twelve pieces that might be combined into a casting mold. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know what that is. I can't pick it up. It looks like a handle of some kind. What is this document? More about Mithras. The cult of Mithras was a mysterious religion practiced within the Roman Empire from around the 1st to the 4th century AD. The name of the Persian god Mithra, adopted by the Greeks as Mithras, was linked with a new and distinctive imagery. Worshippers of Mithras had a complex system of seven grades of initiation with ritualistic meals. Initiates would meet in an underground temples called uh, Mithraea and were a uh, re... Oh, retained in large numbers. This restrained in large numbers. I'm like, wow, okay, they just tie them all up. Um, the iconic scenes of Mithras show him as being born from a rock and slaughtering a bull, Toroctony. Hmm. Interesting. So there's the bull connection. A book about Mithratic Mysteries and the Cult of Mithras. So that's given us dialogue options with someone as well. Anything in here we should be scouting for? What have we got in here? Another document. They're going to do a lot of reading in this one. Wow! And the empty coconuts that they used to imitate the sound of horses' hooves. Click, 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 click. Yep, we've all done that. Another strange ritual for the old gods to keep evil spirits away. The people, f uh, feeling that the dark eye was upon them, would melt their valuables in the fire. Hmm. Sub-Saharan tribes burned fresh, uh, burned fruits. Uh, the rich Roman families spared no expense melting silver or tin. It is not recorded if such valuable offerings were thrown away with the ashes, or if they were you uh, reused at a later date. That puts a whole new spin on the lump of silver in the brazier. Interesting. Nothing 
here, but we've got another document and a map. This is the map of the site. We are at the heart of an old Roman city. <laughs> Wolf, I need your help. How quickly can you come to Florida? Uh, I'm kind of broke at the moment with all the wedding planning. Sorry. It's going to be a while. A couple of years, maybe. Is that okay? Two years? Three years? Sometime around then. Why? What's happened? Are you being carried away by a hurricane? Because I can't help with that, if so. There's a document here. Followers of Mithras were a uh, convert... Uh, were, were covert, sorry. Not converts. Were covert, worshipping more conventional deities such as Juno or Neptune in their everyday lives. Mithras temples were usually found below the temples of other gods. So they were like a dark cult, right? Cool. Mithras followers often referred to their traditional deities to gain passage uh, to the Mithrium. Hmm. The examples of uh, Mithrium of Dio in France is interesting, as the entrance was located beneath a carved statue of Diana. The entrance was possibly revealed by a, a clever stone and rope mechanism, which may have been discovered, or may have never been discovered, if the water infiltration had not destroyed the mechanism and opened the way down to the Mithrium. Mithratic temples can be found in Rome, Ostia, Numidia, Dalmatia, and uh, the Britain, the Britain, the Britain, along with uh, the Rhine Danube frontier, uh, while being somewhat less common in Greece, Egypt, and Syria. So they didn't worship on their doorstep. Cool. And <laughs> we need to steal a pirate ship. Oh, okay. This sounds interesting. Kinda like the idea of a pirate ship of my very own. Another book. Can we read that one as well? No. Okay. We've read all the books. How <laughs> fast do you think we can get a crew together? Uh, like I said, I'm kind of strapped at the moment for time and cash, so... Ooh, a cyclops. Sorry, dude, you have to do this one without me. There's a lot of dust in the air here. Ugh. Or is it pollen? It's probably pollen. There's so much of that flying around out there at the moment as well. I went out today to go get some stuff, and my god. It was like snow down one of the roads. Just all the pollen just drifting off the trees. What have we got here? A cyclops. The cyclops, a one-eyed creature helping Vulcan at the forge. Now, Vulcan and his forge, you know, he was always making fake Vulcan, passports. The god of fire and metalworking. Interesting. So there's a fresco of Vulcan and a cyclops. Are you telling me that you don't want to be known as Captain Wolf? It's tempting. It is, but I'm going to be landlocked to a, my new bride. I don't need the ropes. Sailing days are over. A new adventure begins. I don't need the ropes for now. So we've got ropes. Ooh. There's a little hole there, and it's got a big spider web across it. Yeah. She can join the heist too. Honestly, she might. Yeah. Put her in charge of the fire barrels. Cool. Okay, so somebody left tools down here. Archaeological tools. Excavating tools. A bucket, shovel, and brush. Well, let's take them. Because, you know... Why the heck not? Can I go through here? Yep. Hmm, what have we got here? Crumbling old masonry. What was that? The railway. This railway is used to remove rubble from the site. I 
head. What was the, the door has been left open. Someone did not care or was in haste. Well, the other door was left open as well. There's some fresh polished boots there. And the shelf with the document. Dear Lord Blackmore. We heard that before. Was that on this case? I think it was this. This was Sir Rodney's draft of a letter. Dear friends, I wish to organise a press conference at the Strand Lane Baths next month. Uh, 1893 was a remarkable year for my work in Egypt, which we now know was the Bentcliffe Mummy. Brad W Gaming, how's it going, buddy? Welcome. Uh, now it's time for me to set my focus upon English archaeology to shine the light on our national treasures and reveal them to the public. I would like to see as many journalists as possible in attendance to record this event and record it favourably if we treat them well enough. I should like to recall my old friend uh, friendship with Lord Blackmore and use the special funds of the Royal Archaeological Institute for this event, Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Okay. So, Lord Blackmore must be someone at the Royal Archaeological Institute. Dear Lord Blackmore, the manager of the baths, Sir Gregory Pitkin, was quite a nuisance at the start when I arrived. After you stepped in, he became rather more helpful. Okay, so Pitkin said, well, you know, Lord uh, Sir Rodney um, convinced me to calm down about shutting down the whole archaeological dig. Since being a nice day, you've uh, painted a room pure white. Nice. Awesome. How be ye at sailing? <laughs> I don't know. Alchemist is going to try and rope you into a heist for of a pirate boat. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Uh, according to this, then, Lord Blackmore was the one who told Sir Gregory Pitkin to chill the F out. They became more helpful. Occasionally, people of his rank are not well suited to work of such great magnitude. They lack the necessary vision. In a few weeks' time, I hope to bring good news of the Strand Lane Baths. I am on the verge of discovering a major archaeological artifact. He thinks he's. I think he thinks he's found the dagger, yeah, the, the Mithras dagger, the, go, the true one, the golden one. One that might be used politically by your party to demonstrate the strength of our ancestors and fulfil the need to protect our empire from any present and future threats. Oh, there's some Illuminati shit here now. Oh. Kind regards, Sir Rodney Bentcliffe. Okay. Has anybody seen the um, uh, Robert Dowie Jr.'s Sherlock Holmes movies? The... The first and second one. Welcome back, Chassie. Because there was a guy in it called Lord Blackwood, played by Mark Strong. And he had this whole, like, you know, wanting to take control of the British government to, you know, make it strong again using mysticisms. And the March is... Anyone's dying yet? Well, somebody died at the start, actually. That was the, um, the victim whose murder we we're investigating. <laughs> Thank you for the cheers. Much appreciated. Oh no, Calvin Hobbs and your and you consider yourselves as being smart and funny. It's Calvin and Hobbs. I had a good laugh when you froze uh, Miss Drekin's note uh, about the Arch of Hadrian in the ice. However, our thesis exams are just ahead. And as you are the so-called brain of your improbable duo, I have to warn you that my gastrophates model the ancient Greek crossbow and not the medical device to relieve constipated people, as you might have thought, is not to be touched, or else I'll have to inform Mr. Wormwood about everything you've done these past two years. P.S. I hate Hobbes' tuna sandwich, S. Spittle. So this is a letter penned to some people like a spittle. Interesting. I don't know what the heck that was about. That doesn't seem like it's relevant at all. Ooh, look at this. A bow. This is a reproduction of an ancient Greek crossbow. Aha! This is a reproduction. Okay, well, we can't do anything with that yet, it seems. 
What have we got here? So that's some very nicely rendered water, I've got to say. As for how old this game is, that's some very good looking water. Although there's a bit of a weird swirly whirlpool thing going on there. And yeah, I've never tried sailing myself, but I'd like to. And kayaking is good. I went kayaking last year in uh, Canada with my fiance and her parents. It was great. So we're going to the map. This here. is the map of the site. We are at the heart of an old Roman city. Interesting. It's not very big for a city. Oh, this is the crossbow. So it's for firing grappling hooks from siege towers. The gastrofets were used with ropes and hooks for sieges. Uh huh. But yeah, I'd like to try sailing one day. Sailing and horse riding. Two things I've got on my learn list. Oh, is this a statue of a bull? It is. It is a broken statue of a bull. Or a horse with a very weird ear. And then we've got some of the gods here. Look, there's Neptune covering his shame with some uh, well-placed trees. Neptune, the god of the sea. Is this Minerva? Oh no. Oh, there's Minerva, yeah, yeah. One with the helmet, of course. It is a statue of Minerva. Okay, we're gonna go to Florida and claim a pirate ship. <laughs> well, that's actually ideal. Chassis can be your, uh, your, uh, like, local source, right? She's based in Florida. You can be the local fixer, that's the word I was looking for. The fixer. Construction hooks. Okay. At some point we're going to need to use that crossbow, aren't we? I can feel it. Alright. Is there anything in uh, my Witcher vision? Nope. Just a broken pillar. The Arch of Hadrian. Okay. What is this area called? Ah, the Pits. Okay. You just been chilling out here, Watson? I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. I was wondering where you were. Find the use for an archaeologist trowel. Maybe later. Actually, what was that? Perform an analysis on the 12 pieces to combine them into a casting mold, and then we can find out what they make. I'm gonna guess knife. <laughs> Still gotta search the excavation site though. I haven't found anything else. I don't know, maybe we need to also use some of these dialogues. I think some of the stuff we've discovered earlier lets us now talk to the suspects about more. Let's go back to the station first and maybe we can use what we learned there here. So... Let's also go back to the bath first. Let's see if they've finished clearing the passage. Ah, the tea went cold. Oh, that's just not on. Cold tea? Disgusting. I also forgot to put a little bit of sugar in it. Alright. Let's have a look. Uh, Frigidarum, where is it? This is it. Is the Frigidarum open? No, they haven't cleared the rubble yet. Useless! All these events are bad for the baths. And my job! <laughs> sure. I'm sure you're really broken up about a man who died here as well. Jeez. Alright, so... There we've got Neptune, I guess, or something like that. Or 
squid people. Or it's Ursula from... Uh, was it Ursula from Little Mermaid? Is that the name of the the evil octopus woman witch? Okay, so we can't visualise the stabbing. There's nothing else here that we haven't found. Okay, right, fine, just checking. Let's go to the yard, and we'll have a word with these shifty types. Let's see if there's any new deductions we haven't made yet. Stolen notes and Pitkin's complaint. According to Sir Rodney's notes, he was about to make a remarkable discovery. Sir Gregory Pitkin was complaining about the power Sir Rodney appeared to hold over the baths, which we now know is to do with his Lord uh, Blackmore relationship. But that doesn't work with this. I don't think these work with anything. Oh, effective arrival. Okay. So they added more down here. Kill them all with fire, question mark. Maybe later. Yeah. Okay. Pitkin feels uncomfortable postponing the public opening of the Roman baths because Sir Rodney, uh, because of Sir Rodney. He was angry because of this. So that, pit, that puts him in the motive. Oh, Pitkin had hopes. Uh, the expect to receive much value from Sir Rodney's research. The work will increase the bath's renown and popularity. Possibly. Acid? Gases? <laughs> hmm. So many options. Holmes does have acid. He's got acid back at his thing. So we can form a conclusion from that as well. Blinkhorn felt humiliated. The possibility of a silver weapon because the uh, silver item melted in the brazier and so on. Okay. So we're still working on this. Alright. Put that pole there. Let's have a look at the evidence again as well. I just want to remind myself it was. This is Pitkin, that's the snob. Okay. Blinkhorn's belongings. Sir Rodney's belongings were there. There's Garrow's belongings. Or at least the bloody towel. Okay. I'm pretty sure we found that coin on Sir Rodney's personal effects. Locked. We also know Sir Rodney was recently lowered down somewhere in a harness, like because of the bruises on his back, a couple of days old, so he was probably at the dig site being lowered in somewhere. Alright, who do we want to talk to? Please escort this suspect. I don't know which one we just clicked. Mystery! Here we go, okay. We can ask him about Mithras and the melted silver in the brazier now. What can you tell me about Mithras? Oh, so much. It was the core of our work. Why do you ask? Were you seeking the golden knife? Ah, I see you are an amateur. Yes, the golden knife was our grail. It is said that it bears the only text explaining the ritual of the cult of Mithras. I understand. I read something about immortality. A myth. Uh, the knife would provide immortality only to the worthy one. And yet it is cursed, and it would kill you if you were not initiated. Hmm. Interesting. Did you expect to find the golden knife at the baths? Well, Sir Rodney thought that it might be there. Uh, did you observe the knife representations there? They are so extraordinary. Uh, and we had hoped... Uh, Oh, it is a tragedy that he has passed away, taking all of his secrets with him. As soon as I've been released, I will continue Sir Rodney's researches in his memory. Well, I'm sure you will. And for the princely sum that he was offered, no doubt. <laughs>